Okay, um, this is going to be the third and the last video on this subject. We're going to go to the n-dimensional sphere and we're going to calculate not just the volume but the surface area. Now I want to remind you we have done the n-dimensional uh, pyramid. So in two dimensions the object was, was, a, was a, a triangle and it has a base and a height. The volume in 2D, I guess we call it area, it is given by base times height divided by 2. In three dimensions, the base is, well, if it is a cone, it's a circle. It has some area. Again, let's call that base, base area times height. divided by 3 because we are in 3 dimensions and we made an argument that in n dimensions this would be the base I guess the volume in n minus 1 dimensions base in n minus 1 times height divided by d d or n because we are in n dimensions Okay, so let me start with the circle. We're going to start with 2D. The object we will have is a circle. And my goal is to get both the uh, volume and the surface. Of course, we call the surface of a circle the perimeter. And it's by definition, is pi times the diameter. This is the definition of pi. So I don't have to derive it. It's by definition, is pi times d. But I want to write it in terms of r. So I'm going to write this as 2 pi r. about the volume. I guess in two dimensions we call it area. Well, there's a way of turning this circle into a bunch of triangles. And the way we do this is we take a circle and make thin slices. So here is my circle. I make lots of thin slices. It's like a pizza. I want you to notice that every slice, if they are thin enough, this curvature will be negligible, will look like a triangle. So this circle is nothing but a bunch of triangles. Let's unfold them and put them like this. Here are my slices, lots of them. the area of this? Well, it's going to be the height times base. Well, what is the base? It depends on, if you focus on each triangle, it will depend on the size. But I'm not interested in the size of each triangle. I'm interested in the size of the whole pizza. So, then I have to figure out all of the bases together, which is, of course, the perimeter. If you unfold this pizza, the size of this will be 2 pi r, which is the base, height, which is equal to r, divided by 2, because we are in two dimensions. So this is going to be 2 pi r times r divided by 2, and of course we all know the answer, pi r squared. So that is the area of a circle. Now, we're going to go to three dimensions. The object we're going to have 
is going to be a sphere. You can imagine it being something like a watermelon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make exact the same argument. I'm going to take this watermelon, this, this sphere, and break it into a bunch of cones. And I'm going to say, so here is the center. So that was the center of the pizza. So the slices I'm going to have, so here is something right here, and it's going to be a cone there. There will be another cone here. Even though they don't look identical, you know, they will all have the same height. That is the distance from the surface to the center. So let me, let me unfold this and then try to visualize how these cones would look like. So there would be a bunch of cones, lots of them, if I do them. And I want you to notice that each cone Will, will look like this. It will have a height and has a base. I'm not interested in the volume of each cone. I'm interested in the total, total volume. So the total volume will be the total of all the bases. And of course, the total will be the surface area of the sphere. So the base will be surface area. And height, if I multiply those two and divide it by three, I should get the volume. Notice, I will not, by just using this, figure out surface or the volume, but I will have a relationship between these two. Let's write that explicitly. in three dimensions. Volume of a 3D sphere is going to be the base, which is surface area of a three-dimensional sphere, times height, which is, of course, r, divided by 3. This is a relationship between volume and the surface. So if I can figure out either the volume or the surface area, then I will succeed in getting both of them. Now the beautiful thing about this formula is I can extend it to n dimensions. If I go to n dimensions, I can say what is the volume of an n-dimensional sphere? That would be the surface area of n-dimensional sphere times r divided by d. So if I can get the n-dimensional spheres, either the surface or the volume, I know both of them. The next thing I'm going to do is something that Archimedes did. So again, I want to bring Archimedes. This is going to be one of the most beautiful things that we, we as humans did. And unfortunately, this is not emphasized enough. So I'm going to, uh, there are different versions of this, but I'm going to do a version that can be extended to higher dimensions. So what Archimedes did, he noticed something super interesting, super excited, exciting. So he said, let's consider a sphere. And let's consider a cylinder. This cylinder will be same size as the sphere such that the sphere will perfectly fit in it. So if this has a radius r, the cylinder 
will have height of 2R. And right here, the radius will be R. Now, what Archimedes said, and it's an amazing thing, he said that the area of the sphere is identical. He proved it to the side surface area of the cylinder. Now, this is not a very complicated proof. It doesn't require integrals. It doesn't require fancy calculations. What we have to do is we have to focus on one slice. So let me get a slice here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an argument saying that the, 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 the area of the slice on the cylinder is identical to the area of the slice on this arbitrary uh, slice in the, in the sphere. And if it is true for this slice, it's true for the next slice, etc. So if I can show it, these to be identical, then the statement, Archimedes' statement, must be correct. So let's do it. So let's first imagine how the slice in the cylinder would look like. So if I have this cylinder, and if I take a slice, a thin slice, it would look like a ring. It would be a big ring of size 2R. You will notice that if I take the slice in the sphere, it will also look like a ring, but it would look a smaller ring. The sphere is smaller, at that particular slice, would be smaller than that of cylinder. So naively one might say, well, the cylinder is looking bigger by some angle factor, cosine theta or sine theta, depending on how you define the angle. If you look carefully, if I blow this up, let's blow that up so we can all see. Here is my slice. Here is my sphere. This is an angle. This is cylinder. I want you to notice that the slice for the sphere because it cuts with an angle is bigger. And if you put both of them together, the fact that it's smaller in size, in radius, but it's slanted, turns out they are identical to each other. So, the volume of a sphere, the volume of a sphere must be identical to the volume of a cylinder, the side surface. How can I do the volume of the side surface? Well, actually, that's very simple. You take a piece of paper, you unfold it. So if I unfold a cylinder, it would look like a rectangle. Remember, the height is 2R. And the radius was r. So if I unfold it, the perimeter would be 2 pi r. Now I have the area. The area is 2 pi r times 2 r, 4 pi r squared. Let's write this down. I'm going to rewrite all these things. So in two dimension, the surface area was, well, the surface was the perimeter, 2 pi r. Volume was pi r squared. In 3D, we have the surface, which is 4 pi r squared. Thanks to Archimedes, we know this. Now, the volume, of course, the volume we argued 
we derive the formula, it is, can be turned into a bunch of cones. We said the volume has to be surface times height divided by 3. So height is r. So this has to be 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. That is the volume of a sphere. Of course, you have all seen this formula. What is beautiful is I can extend these ideas to higher dimensions. I can go to four dimensions, and five dimensions, and six dimensions. So, so the relationship between volume and surface is correct in every dimension. The only difference, in 3D this is 3, in 4D this is 4, in 5D this is 5. Turns out, you could also take an n-dimensional sphere, let's say a four-dimensional sphere, and place it into inside a cylinder. So what would that object look like? Well, that object would look like, so the two-dimensional cylinder is this. You take one-dimensional object, just the length, this thing, and fold it. So what you need to do to make the cylinder, you need to take a three-dimensional object. This is a circle with an area of pi r squared. And you fold it. Of course, I cannot draw this on the board. But, but the end result is, turns out, the side surface of this folded object in four dimensions is identical to the volume of the four-dimensional sphere. So then I have to ask the uh, question, what is the surface area of this four-dimensional cylinder? Well, the answer is pi r squared times 2 pi r, the perimeter. So that is 2 pi square r cubed. Of course, if I know the surface, so this came from here, then I know the volume. Volume is surface height divided by 4. We are in four dimensions. Height is r. So this is going to be 2 pi square r to the 4 divided by 4. I want you to notice I can go to 5 dimensions. Then, figuring out the surface, I can calculate the volume. And go on and on and on. And I can calculate the volume of n-dimensional sphere, both the volume and the surface. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks.